los. Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your time zone. Great to have you in our SAP User Groups YouTube stream. Today, we continue our SAP Signavia webcast series. The episode number three, which is today, is a hands-on session and our experts will show how to connect SAP Signavia process insights to an ERP backend system. Our speakers are Till Trautevik and Lukas Stier, both are SAP Signavia product experts, will lead us through the session and uh, show the presentation. My name is Larissa Brinkman from the SAP Global User Groups Organization, and I'm your host for today. I kindly ask you to post your questions in the live chat, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. The additional materials for this session, meaning the PDF will be published uh, in the description to the video shortly after the session. With this, I wish you great interaction and kindly ask Till to take over. Thanks a lot, Larissa. A very warm welcome to everybody from my side as well. My name is Till. I'm working in the, in the product department of Subsig Navio. Today, it's my pleasure to, to answer the questions you hopefully punch very nicely motivated into the chat, while my dear colleague and friend Lucas is going to take over and present to enter and flow to actually connect the system. Lucas, over to you. Yes, thank you, Till. All right, let's get started. My name is Lucas. I'm part of the product and engineering organization for SAP Signavio Process Insights. And as Till uh, and I, we're working on building up the content and developing process insights further on, on, on one hand. And on the other hand, we're working closely together with our customers and our partners, especially on the technical and, and business onboarding side. I would say let's get started right away for today's session. And today's session will be all about the technical onboarding of process insights. So how you can connect SAP Signavio process insights to an ERP system to get your data into process insights. Now, the goal of today's session is to give you an overview on how to connect, um, yeah, exactly this process insights tenant to your ERP source system. <clears throat> Now, let's take a quick look here at the agenda. You can see it already. I will start with a quick overview of what Process Insights actually is. I assume that at least most of you uh, already know the general outline of Process Insights, but I think as a warm up, uh, I would go over it here again to get everyone on the same page here. Then next up, we will have a look at the SAP Help Portal, which is the very best starting point when you want to start off with Process Insights. Uh, you will see that Process Insights, including the technical onboarding, is very well documented, and we will take a look at what is there to find in the SAP Help Portal. Then after that, we will jump right into the theory of the technical onboarding. So we will take a look at, at all the steps that you need to know in order to connect process insights to the ERP system. And after we're done with this theory, I will show you uh, hands-on in the system, how you create a process insights tenant on the BTP, um, which administrative options you have on the BTP and how you connect this tenant to the ERP system to, to get the data out and finally display it in process insights. When we have the data in the tenant, uh, we will take a look at the administrative options insights, uh, inside of the process insights tenant, and then there will be time for your questions to get you started for your own process insights connection. All right, I would say let's jump right into the content of today. And as I said, I will start with the overview of Process Insights. So basically just a couple of bullet points as a reminder of what Process Insights is all about. And as you can see, uh, SAP Signavio Process Insights is a, a cloud-based analytics solution 
which is aiming especially at uh, business executives, at process owners, but uh, also transformation centers. So really these people that are focused on working with the actual processes and that know their processes and process insights really gives you a quick start to get insights into your ERP system, which is what we will see today as well. Now, once uh, set up, uh, Process Insights is providing you with these instant insights into your core business processes, and it helps you to identify specific focus areas and, and give you the uh, ability to drill down uh, and yeah, to identify certain areas that you want to focus and that you should analyze further. But it also goes a step further and provides recommended actions and technologies to actually realize the improvement potentials that, that you have discovered in your business processes. Now, last but not least, Process Insights also offers an industry benchmarking for specific KPIs um, in order for you to compare your findings uh, with your industry peers. And that's basically it about the capabilities of Process Insights. But before we can use all of these great functionalities, we have to set up Process Insights, and we have, and that's what we have. Uh, yeah, that's what we have on the plate for for today's session here. So we will tackle the setup of Process Insights today. And now looking at the connection. Um, yeah, how to connect as an ERP system to uh, Process Insights. So I would say, let's get right into the connection part and how to actually do that. And as I already said, the SAP Help Portal is your go-to point regarding all topics, um, including the technical onboarding. Um, we will also go into the Help Portal, uh, into the administration guide in just a second, but let me give you a quick overview first. So what you can see here is basically the landing page of the help portal for Process Insights. And what is important uh, for the technical onboarding is the administration guide. And that is right here. You can see it here. And basically, you can find everything technical related and, and connectivity related to Process Insights. The whole onboarding process is documented there. The technical prerequisites and this administration guide really gives you, uh, yeah, it guides you step by step uh, through the process here. Now, in a side note for today, we also have the end user information. Um, that is basically also part on, on the help portal, which uh, contains the reference guide and the reference guide gives you the more business side of, of things. So how to actually use process insights from an end user perspective, for example, how to read the process flows and the key figures displayed there, and what is the reference period of a specific process flow and, and so on. But uh, what we tackle today is the technical onboarding. And for that, the administration guide is our go-to document uh, that, that we will use today. And for that, I would say, let's jump right into the administration guide and see what is there. All right, and for that, we're going into the help portal, right into the administration guide. So you just saw it in the PowerPoint. Now, what we have here is basically the administration guide. We can see we have the system landscape uh, documented here. If you want to take a look at that, we'll also talk about that uh, later on. We have the prerequisites and pre-configuration here, which is basically all the requirements that you should uh, have in place before you start your connection to, to Process Insights uh, from the ERP system. So everything is also well documented here. Then uh, after you have done the prerequisites, you will get to the onboarding and the onboarding is basically consisting of these four steps plus step zero, uh, the prerequisites that we just took a look at and everything is well uh, yeah, documented here as well. Um, for today's session, we will actually follow the structure. So we will do all the five steps here or we will discuss all these five steps here uh, first in a theory and then we will do this uh, hands on in the session here and make a live connection. But if you want to connect your system, you will always follow these five onboarding steps here. Next up, we have the connectivity and configuration, which is basically giving you some more insights uh, about yeah, the data connection management, the monitoring and management of the data collections, um, and the subscription management on the BDP. 
Then we also have the security and the troubleshooting, which is basically these two uh, chapters here are covering the regarding topics. Uh, for example, the common issues. If you have some problems with the data collection or the account setup, you will find uh, your help uh, right here. All right, that's about it about the content of the administration guide. So as you can see, there is a lot documented about process insights. And as I said, what we are focusing on today is basically the onboarding process. So the prerequisites and then over to finally the live collection uh, connection. So to get your data into the tenant and then uh, to, to finish the setup of process insights. All right, and with that, let's get back to the PowerPoint again. Um, so everything that you will see next in, in this PowerPoint here, you can also find in the help portal, in the administration guide, as I just uh, showed it to you really briefly. I just aggregated basically the most important points uh, from the actual onboarding. So we don't have too much information displayed here. Um, but if anything is unclear later on, uh, you can always use the administration guide to, to read yourself uh, into the topic. All right. So now uh, we will have a really close look at the actual onboarding. I just showed you this graphic. Uh, we have seen these steps in the portal already, and I will go through these uh, five steps uh, now in, in a little bit more detail. Basically, the first uh, thing to understand uh, that we have these technical prerequisites in place. And as you know, for example, that right now we can connect an SAP ECC system, so an on-premise one and an S4HANA system. And those uh, systems need to meet uh, yeah, certain prerequisites, for example, specific versions, right? So basically, these technical prerequisites, uh, they need to be met uh, from an ERP side before the technical connector can actually start. Then we jump right into the uh, BTP setup, which is really easy to execute now because we have a booster uh, in place that is aggregating the central steps uh, of the setup on the BTP, but I will also show you that later on. Then in the second step, you can configure the identity provider. Uh, you can use the default one or your own identity provider that is also taking part on the BTP and the user management. So manage the users, which roles and role collections and who should have access to which content and process insights that's on the BTP as well. Now that's with it with the BTP setup, but at this point, uh, basically we have created the empty tenant. Um, so basically the, the empty shell is there of process insights, but at this point you can't really see any content so far because no data is being pushed into the tenant yet. Um, so the tenant is created and accessible for you, but it's pretty, uh, yeah, it's, it's empty at this point. And to change that we need uh, the data to be pushed into the tenant from your ERP system and to enable the data, uh, yeah, yeah, reaching the, the process insights tenant, we need to uh, jump into the ERP system to set up the connection so that the data is pushed uh, into this cloud-based uh, process insights tenant. And that is step number four. Now, after these uh, four steps or five steps here are executed, your tenant is ready to go. The data is flowing continuously and uh, the initial setup of process insights is done and you can see the first uh, content coming up. Now, before we go into these uh, steps in a little bit more detail, um, yeah, and knowing the, the rough outlining of these steps uh, and keeping that in mind, I think it makes sense to take a look at the high uh, level architecture or system landscape of process insights to give you an idea why we have to do these steps, right? So on the right, uh, you can see uh, the ERP system here, um, which might be an ECC or an S4HANA system. And in there are two plugins uh, right here. So the first one is called the STAPI plugin, which contains the key figure code. And that basically means that, as, that the STAPI plugins um, 
yeah, contains the, the coding that calculates all the things uh, displayed to you in Process Insights. And as of right now, we have over 200 key figures in Process Insights and every key figure has a specific uh, coding and specific parameters that are already pre-specified by, 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 by my team um, to do the right calculation uh, on the SAP tables to aggregate the content and display it in, in Process Insights. Then next up, the second plugin in the ERP system is uh, the STPI plugin, which is kind of a framework that is pushing the data using the uh, cloud application lifecycle management code or framework, um, which basically enables us to connect on-premises systems uh, to the cloud here. Now, next up here on the left side, uh, on the other hand, you can see the BTP, so the business technology platform, which is the central platform where all SAP cloud uh, applications are running these days. And here on, uh, yeah, here you can see on the top, there is also the process insights tenant running. So this empty or this shell uh, of the application that I just uh, mentioned earlier here. And as you can see in the overall flow uh, from the data in this architecture, the data is basically getting collected here, is then getting pushed out of the ERP system over this, uh, yeah, this uh, data connection here into the BTP is then stored in the uh, HANA cloud and then Process Insights can access this data and aggregate the views and, and create the content based off this data. And you can see it in the end in the tenant there. All right, now let's get back to these steps. Uh, now that we have seen the architecture, I think it's quite clear why we have some technical prerequisites here. We have to be BTP involved, but we have most importantly, the ERP system and the two plugins uh, involved. And that is basically uh, also where these um, prerequisites are centering around. So what we have here is uh, we have to fulfill some uh, prerequisites before the actual uh, connection can be established. Um, first up, we have the ERP system version. So the requirement is either the SAP uh, ERP 6 um, with the enhancement package 7 or 8 or uh, any version in maintenance of the S4 HANA system. Now talking about our plugins, and now that we know uh, what the ST API and the STPI plugin uh, plugins are, we have to keep in mind that uh, they should be updated and they have to be kept updated here. So uh, there is new versions of these plugins uh, coming from time to time and Frost Insights requires a specific minimum version of, of these plugins here. Especially for the, for the S, the API plugin, it is really important to keep them updated because the key figure coding is contained in there. And as Process Insights is a cloud product, we have quite short release cycles and therefore we always produce and create new key figures um, which are contained in the ST API plugin. And with a new version, this new key figure coding gets into this plugin as well. Now, next up here, we have uh, some SAP nodes uh, that are basically in place to make sure that these plugins are working just fine. So there's always some fixes going on for these plugins and the SAP nodes make sure that you have the latest ones and everything is, is basically working as expected. Then next up in the users and authorizations right here, um, basically we need two users and we will also see why in a bit later in today's session when I go into live demo. And we need one background user which, which has some, some rules which basically allow you to trigger specific jobs, uh, let's say it at this point. And then we also need the dialogue user to access certain transactions, but um, yeah, as I said, uh, we will see those users in action then later on in the, in the live demo. Then you also need to install a certificate to make sure that this data is also being transferred in a, yeah, in a secure way. And we also need a parameter to be set to true so that the HTTPS uh, connection is basically uh, yeah, enabled and then ready to connect. Now, last but not least here at the very bottom, we have the proxy settings. So if you are using a proxy and 
you want to use it or then set it up for process insights, you need to have your proxy information at hand when you're doing the connection between the ERP and, and the tenant later on. So you, you might need the, the host, uh, the ID, the password, um, the port. So yeah, that you're able to enter this information when you're connecting to the ERP system. All right. Um, these were all the prerequisites that have to be in place. Uh, don't worry. Um, they're all really well documented uh, in our administration guide, as I showed you in the beginning. Um, but yeah, make sure that you have them in place before starting the setup on the BTP. And yeah, regarding the BTP, there are some steps that you have to complete on the BTP side. But uh, as Process Insights has a booster, these steps are, are really easy and really fast done. And I will show you how fast this works. Uh, because even though Process Insights is a kind of new product, we claim that we deliver the, the, the actual fastest way to insights. Uh, you can do the setup in 14 minutes. Customers have done it in under 10 minutes. I've seen it. Um, but I think you get the hang. Uh, the setup of Process Insights is actually really fast. Um, so once uh, you have these prerequisites in place, uh, it is really a fast way to, to get connected here. Now, once connected successfully, the data collection from the insights tenant will start and in at least yeah, 24 hours, depending on how much data has to be pushed on the initial data load, the data will be available and the tenant is, is ready to use. So it is really not comparable to, let's say, your usual SAP implementation. So here on the slide, as you can see, um, there's all the prerequisites that we talked about here on, on this slide. Here you can see the documentation of these prerequisites in the administration guide. And I think they are really well documented here. So you can follow along all these steps and you can make these prerequisites in your ERP system. All right, and that's already it uh, with the technical prerequisites. Uh, so let's assume they are taken care of. And next step, if you remember, we need to jump into the business technology platform. And on the BTP, you have a global account. Uh, if, if you have a purchase, a license of Plus Insights, and you have a global account where the license of Plus Insights has been added to. So the, the entitlement of Process Insights, which is basically the right to use Plus Insights on, on this account. Now, what you need to do is you have to create a sub account into this global account that is specifically there for Process Insights. You can also add Process Insights to an existing uh, sub account. Um, you just have to have the sub account in place to be able to subscribe, and you personally need to add the service plan. And this depends on your specific use case. You can use uh, Process Insights as part of the Rice bundle, which is then only a one-time data load, or you can use it as a, yeah, as usual. Um, so as a full license, which would be either a, a test license for the QA system or a standard license for the productive version or productive uh, system here. And yeah, in this context, um, talking about the QA system or the test license in the productive system, uh, which is the standard uh, license, um, we always recommend to do uh, first uh, the, the quality system and to do the initial connection there to see if everything is working fine, to see if your technical prerequisites are in place and everything works. And then it is quite easy to copy these configurations from the QA system to the productive uh, system and see this one as, uh, and connect this one as well. <clears throat> So depending uh, what applies to you, the available plan has to be selected in this step here. Um, RICE for RICE customers, the test uh, service plan for the QA system, or the standard service plan for the productive system. Next up, we need to go into the regarding sub account that has been created and uh, or that is already in place where we want to have Process Insights and subscribe to the application. So we have to subscribe to Process Insights here. And right now we have this uh, sub account, so to say the new uh, subdivision of the global account. And this sub account is, is basically empty right now if you, if you created it. So on the BTP, you can 
obviously also subscribe to all kinds of applications and you need to specify which application you want to add uh, to the SAP account. And in our case, you want to select Process Insights here to, to add to the SAP account. And then you can see here on the small icon, once you have uh, yeah, the subscription in place, you can see the small icon here where you can access your Process Insights tenant at this point already. So if you click on it right here at this point, it will be empty because the connection isn't there. And then once the connection is set up, you can successfully access everything uh, over this link that is uh, yeah, right here in the subscription. <clears throat> exactly. Now, when you have this link, uh, that means that basically is uh, yeah that basically everything has been set it up uh, correctly in the first place here. So uh, the tenant is there. This this initial empty shell is there, and uh, you can you can enter it. And then in the next steps, you could uh, go to the uh, users and the role collections and make your user management, for example at the people that should have which access. So we have predefined uh, role collections already in place and roles uh, in place that you can select to, um, yeah, to restrict the specific users that you grant access here to specific content that should be visible for them in Process Insights. So as you can see here, we have uh, the roles here. We have this role collection of the BPI admin. Of course, he has a, a lot of roles here, but here you can see the roles uh, where you have basically only one end-to-end -end process here that is visible. So if you have a person that has only this role here that I'm pointing at right now, then this person will only be able to see this end-to-end -end process here. Now, once you have done the user management and also the, the identity provider, uh, you can uh, yeah, configure the trust configuration. I think we'll get to that later on in the demo again. <laughs> now, once you have done that, you have basically finished the setup on the BTP. And then if you click on the link uh, in the subscription, you will get this tenant here and see that at this point, the tenant of Process Insights is empty and it tells you, hey, get started by connecting your ERP system and also pointing you at the administration guide where you can then follow and make this initial connection. But at this point, all the setup on the BTP is actually done. And now in order to make this, this last step, so the, the connection between the ERP system and Process Insights, we actually have to jump into the ERP system and we need to call a specific transaction. And it's also the reason why you have to provide a dialogue user in the prerequisites here that has certain access to a number of transactions. And the transaction we're using here is the slash n slash sdf slash alm underscore setup. And if you go into this transaction, um, the window that you will see it's basically this window here, and this window will give you these uh, four steps here. And basically, I think the next slide, yes, exactly. So basically this screen uh, can also look like this. I will use this slide because this slide is a little bit better explaining on, on what to do here. Um, so in the first step, you will name this connection. So here the target ALM could, the description here is basically the naming of your specific uh, connection that you're setting up here. Um, yeah, best uh, practice here is to include uh, somehow plus insights or insights in the naming here so you can recognize it and differentiate it uh, later on if you look for this connection and you know that it is about plus insights here. Um, basically, you're here free to choose whatever you want to. In the second step, we have to create uh, the destination for the HTTP uh, connection here, um, where you basically paste the service key uh, right into here and then the root URL and this service key you are getting from the BTP. I will show you that later on, but basically you're making the initial connection here to the BTP here. Then you will enter the background user that you created in the technical prerequisites here. Um, and then you will, uh, yeah, after registering this background user, you will get the LMS ID, which is the first, let's say, heartbeat from the BTP. So at this point, you know, okay, there is already a connection. And in the last step, in step number four, you have to activate the business process monitoring use case here. And once you have activated this use case and everything, uh, the LMS ID was shown and, and stuff like that, then 
actually the data is starting to flow continuously into your tenant and then you can go into the tenant uh, of Fast Insights and see that it's not empty anymore and your connection is already set up. So this fourth and last step is really only this interface and these four steps that you have to do, which are quite easy. You have uh, all the things in place. You have the service key from the VTP setup. You have the background user from the technical prerequisites. You have to name this connection and activate this use case and you're already good to go. And the data is flowing. <clears throat> so I think it's already quite clear that it's really easy to set it up. Um, to make it even easier, we also have the booster and I would like to show you the booster uh, because I showed you all the steps in the PowerPoint, um, basically creating the sub account and all of that manually. Um, we can also use the booster. And for that, uh, I would say, let's transition into the live demo where I will go over the steps that I showed you uh, in the PowerPoint now, uh, yeah, on my own here. Um, first in the BTP and then in the ERP. And let's see uh, how we establish this connection here to the tenant and fill this tenant that we will create now with actual data. So for that, we will go into our uh, global account here, which is called the BPI Live Demo, which is briefly reloading here because I haven't been here for some time. Basically, it's this global account that, in your case, would have the assignment uh, for, for Process Insights. And as you can see here, we have the Boosters option. And if we click on this Boosters option here, we can then see that we can look for Process Insights here in the search bar. We'll give it a quick second and look here for process insights search bar. And here we can see we have the booster in place, uh, prepare an account for SAP Signavio Process Insights. So that's exactly what it's doing. Let's jump into this booster here. Let's see in the overview what it's doing. And basically it is creating, uh, yeah, it will create a SAP account. It will assign the entitlements and create the subscriptions and a service key for us. So it will do all of these steps on, on the BTP that we showed in the setup. It will do for us automatically. We have to give it a little bit more input, um, but I will show you that. We can click here on start to get started with the booster. Now in the first step of the booster, there's basically this check here. Uh, yeah, it's checking if you're authorized to use this booster. So if you have the proper access to the global account, for example, uh, the administration role here, and that you have sufficient entitlements for process insights in place. Then we can click next here to go to the second step. Um, you have two scenarios here. You can select an existing sub account that you want to deploy this booster in, or you can create a sub account. Now uh, for us, uh, we want to create a new one. We don't have any sub account where we would or we would want to deploy Process Insights. So we would just create an own sub account that will just basically create uh, or yeah, contain of Process Insights only. <clears throat> and now we can go here to the configure sub account. As I already said, and now the plan selection is right here. So we have the partner plan, uh, Rice, uh, if you're a Rice customer, um, the test for QA system and the standard for production system. Now, as this one is our initial connection here, and we, yeah, um, we could go for standard for test. And I would say, let's go for the test one here. We have the required quota, which is one. And we can name the sub account here. So we could name it, for example, user groups, uh, user groups, demo, and I'm Lucas. And to give the, the sub account a name, we could select the provider, Azure and AWS here. We also can select the region here. Um, basically, we will take the closest that, uh, that we have here in place which is here. Now here, the subdomain is basically, we can customize the subdomain that we have from this tenant that we're about to create. So where, uh, yeah, our process insights tenant, um, this subdomain is customizable. So in the first part of uh, this domain, you can actually write uh, in whatever you would want to have in the URL. For example, here, uh, 
Um, we want to have user groups demo here, so it will be displayed in the URL of the tenant that we have later on. You could, we could also change the org name and the space name, but we will keep that for now. And now in step number four, we have the possibility to add users here. And basically um, we're using here the yeah, default identity provider by the SAP. Um, of course, you can also use your own uh, identity provider in the trust configuration on the BTP later on. But for now, we will go with the default one and I will add myself with my normal mail as an administrator and then also as a developer. So here as the administrator, if you do the initial setup here, um, it makes most sense if the person that is making the setup is just adding themselves as administrator and developer. And then from that point, this person can then add and restrict more users later on um, once you have done this booster setup here. But basically here, I will have the administrator access to the process insights then later on, which is important because we want to see all the available options of, of process insights when we created the tenant. <clears throat> and now in the last step, we get this review. So looking once again at all our configuration that we did in this, in this booster. And as I said, it really summarized all these steps here that you would have to do manually before the booster uh, is now summarized in this booster and you can just do it all in one place. And if I click now on finish here, what will happen is it will basically yeah, complete all these steps here to create all the things that you need uh, in order to create the um, yeah the sub account and the uh, yeah process insights tenant in the sub account. Now this booster takes about 10-15 minutes, and of course we don't want to wait for that in today's session. So I already did exactly the steps that uh, I did uh, that I showed you here. We'll let this one run because I wanted to show it to you. But basically, once this has finished, you will end up exactly uh, at this window. And in the sub account that you created, remember that we wanted to create a new sub account. So here we are, we have created a sub account and there's process insights inside. After this quick reload, I will show you how it looks. Basically you can see, uh, yeah, I created it a couple hours ago. Uh, same procedure as I did in the booster here. I also used the booster. And if we go here, we're in the sub account. And if we go here to instances and subscriptions, we can see now that we have an yeah, we have an application running SAP Plus Insights. We have an instant and an environment. Um, but there's basically two important things to see here. One is this link. Uh, we will click on that in just a second. That will basically lead you to uh, yeah, lead us to our uh, Process Insights tenant that we created. And in the second step, we also have the key which is basically the service key here, um, accessible here to make the connection in just a second. So if you remember, we had to paste the service key in the ERP system to make the uh, connection to get the, um, yeah, to get the connection here. So here is the service key that you need to establish this connection. So if we click on this icon here, we can open the tenant already and we can basically see um, that the, the general outline is already there, so we can see the end-to-end -end processes, line of business here, but we cannot use this tenant at this point because once this uh, has finished in the initial load here, we can see that it is empty because there is no data in there and it will point us to the administration guide here as well. Let's give it a quick second. It's, uh, it takes some, some seconds here when you're opening it first and then we will see that this tenant is basically empty. And exactly as expected, so we have this empty shell already ready. We have all the steps in place. And what we need to do now is the actual connection. And then our tenant is ready to go. Now for that, if you remember, uh, our next step is that we now have to jump into the ERP system. And for that, I'm just opening my ERP system, which is basically yeah, an SAP test system here um, that has all these prerequisites that I showed in the beginning in place. 
And now we can go to the transaction that I showed you on the PowerPoint. Um, if you remember, it was the slash n slash sdf slash alm underscore setup. And if we go into this transaction here, we will see we can, uh, we have some stuff, some other connection here because we use this uh, yeah, system as a demo system here. So we have to first do a cleanup here and we want to delete this destination. And now that's basically what you would see when you open it for the first time, basically. Now, remember uh, in the first step, we want to name our connection here and maybe we can name it insights. Um, insights uh, Lucas so I know it's it's just uh, me that established the connection but in the end you know it's it's totally up to you um, how to name it maybe to make it a little bit more clear here um, using an underscore basically it's totally up to you um, how you how you name this basically now if you hit enter here we can see that we now can create and update our HTTP uh, destination here and if we click on that we can now paste the service key. Remember that service key we can find on the BTP. So going back to our sub account here, we also access the tenant. We have this one key in place here. If we click on this key, we can see that we can copy this JSON with this button. We can close it again, go back to our um, here, and then we can paste it in here and click OK. Now this has been out of field now, so we have pasted it using this button. In the next step, we have to also paste the root URL. And for that, we're going back again to the uh, SAP account. We're going back to the key here, opening the key and looking at this URL. And basically that's what we want to copy here until the .com. Um, so just taking this URL out of the service key going back to the root URL and paste it basically in here. And then we make the check mark. You can see that the uh, destination has been modified here. That's what we want. And we have step number two done. Now, step number three, we want to enter the background user. Um, we have our own demo user here that has basically everything, all the roles that we need here. You would enter your specific background user that you created in the prerequisites here. And now we can register this user and we can see that worked. You can see that the auto discovery job has been triggered. And what we can see here is, uh, yeah, the first sign of success, let's say it, and we have the LMS ID, and that is basically coming from the BTP, so we know there has been already some heartbeat from the BTP that we received, so we can see already so far that worked. Now we have to activate the use case in the last step here, and as I said, there is uh, only one here. It's the business process monitoring use case that we want to activate. We set the check mark here, and we confirm that. And that is basically it about the connection. Um, now, if we go back to our tenant, remember the tenant was basically empty. So it was displaying this. Now, if we hit refresh on this tenant, there should something happen. And we can already see that we get the overview. So the start page. So now that we established the connection successfully, we can see that we can see the content so we can see the end-to-end -end processes that are there the lines of businesses uh, basically we can see the the content skeleton at this point of, of process insights and if we go into the administration here and look at the data collection runs we can actually take a look and see that the data is flowing in right now from our erp system so at this point we have this initial data load where this data is basically coming from the ERP into the uh, HANA cloud, where then Process Insights can, can access this data and show the specific metrics. So here we have a, a list of all the content that is in Process Insights. We can see uh, that we have some uh, specific data already in this uh, tenant here. What we can also see here 
is that uh, yeah when the data collection we can see the date of the last data collection here and we can see it was in april 4th and at uh yeah 3 43 as uh, yeah central european standard time which is basically one minute ago as you can see on my time settings here um so that worked we have the tenant we have the data in the tenant and from now on this connection is established and we have successfully yeah finished all the steps to make this connection now, what I wanted to show you here is uh, a little bit more of these administration features that you have now that this tenant is basically set up and able to, to show you all the, uh, the data. Um, basically, you have a number of settings here, for example, the storage settings. Uh, here, you can set the maximum number of collection runs that are stored. So as you know, in Process Insights, um, these data collection runs are basically an ongoing process where you get your data continuously pushed into the tenant here. And here, you can select the maximum number of how many of these data collection runs should be stored, um, which will basically limit uh, how much yeah, data will be in your tenant, and you can basically control it this way. Um, <clears throat> yes, so how much historical data should be in your tenant here. Now you can also see here the QM7 is basically the, the system that is connected here right now. Um, and you can see that is the ERP system that I connected uh, in this demo here for you. And what we can also see is all the content here, as I said, and that all of this uh, data collection status is active. In case you want to, you don't want to collect specific content here from Pulse Insights, you can also use this button here to deactivate certain content from getting pushed into the uh, yeah into the tenant here. Exactly. All right, and from this point on, you're now able to see. Uh, of course, if you have more data here, more than our uh, test uh, system here or QA system here. Um, it would take a little bit longer, up to 24 hours for the whole data to, to load into this tenant, but then you're good to go and the connection is established here. So I hope I made it uh, quite clear how, how easy and fast uh, the connection to, to uh, yeah, process insights from your ERP actually is. Um, of course, you have to do some prerequisites uh, before you can start all of this. But once you have these prerequisites in place in your ERP, it is really, really fast. As I showed you in a live demo, um, you can do all the setup on the BTP and then make the connection in the ERP using the transaction that I showed you, the SDF uh, ALM setup. Now, we can also take a look as we have some more time to go. Um, we can take a look at the administrative options on the BTP. Um, I already showed you what you can set up or uh, change in the in the tenant. Now on the BTP, you also have some some options to to do, which is basically uh, yeah. Uh, maybe let's start off with the trust configuration. If you want to use your own identity provider here, you can use the trust configuration and basically establish trust trust and then you can use your own identity provider if you don't want to or can use the uh, default identity provider by sap now we also have uh, role collections here on the btp um, these are basically predefined uh, role collections um, that uh, basically give you certain access and certain roles um, already out of the box um, that you can give uh, specific users that you added to this uh, sub account and for example if we take a look here um, the process insights user so you have end user access to all the solution if you look at the roles we can see all the end-to-end -end processes all the line of businesses this user also can see monetary values and also personal data stored in, in process insights <clears throat> Now, if you want, would want to have, uh, of course, these customized uh, role collection, you can also create role collections and also use these existing roles already. So there's roles for basically all the end-to-end -end processes, as you just saw, all the line of businesses. Um, and then also, for example, if you should see monetary values, if you uh, are a data privacy administrator, um, we also have roles for that in place, so that is totally up to you and you have to decide which user has to see which, which content then in the end. Yeah, talking about users, how to actually add users, uh, basically you can go into here, 
uh, at this point, there is only Till and me in the sub account here. Um, you could create here and add the users by their mail. And then you would have the users um, give them the role collections and the roles that they need uh, and they should have. And then they can access uh, using the link here in, in Process Insights. Exactly. Now, maybe one thing that I didn't show you, um, I talked about that you can customize the, the subdomain of, of Process Insights here, um, which you can see here. I selected user groups in the in the booster setup. And basically, this is the customizable part of your URL of the tenant. So whatever you type into the uh, yeah, subdomain a part of the booster in the second step or the third step, um, that will be changed here uh, in this part of the yeah, URL. All right, I would say we have 10 minutes to go. Um, I would say it is time for questions. That's from that's it from my side for now. Um, yeah, we have established the connection here. Uh, we did all the setup on the BTP and we actually achieved our tenant to be running. We can see all the content here. You can see the end-to-end -end processes here. So um you would see then of course uh the yeah more content here if if you connected your system but we achieved to connect this tenant to the erp system in today's session i hope uh, it really gave you some some valuable insights here and now let's get back to the questions and see if there's anything open or unclear all right. Uh, first of all, Lucas, thank you very much for your very detailed uh, presentation with uh, all these instructions how to do it right in the system, also for the demonstration. And uh, uh, there was a couple of questions in the chat that were already answered by Teal. And I can only encourage our audience to bring up their questions in the chat and leverage the opportunity of having the subsignavia experts in our session today. So let's see if we'll get more questions in the chat. As I've already indicated, uh, the PDF for this session will be published in the description to the video shortly after this session ends. Um, maybe a short question that came up earlier. Um, it was asked uh, in connection to the uh, data that you shown in your demonstration. Uh, do we really have a live uh, data flow? Yeah, sure. I think uh, we, we pretty much saw it uh, here when I did the setup, right? So uh, once uh, before I set up the connection here, um, there was no data in the tenant. Uh, we couldn't access all this content, right? And once I set up the connection, we could see here in the administration panel here that we have all the data available um, and basically everything is here in the system now. Now, talking about the live data connection is now that we have this initial data load here that is successfully, uh, yeah, has been successfully performed, right? Now, what happens, it's not only this initial data load, there's actually a continuous data load that, correct me if I'm wrong, Till, I think once a day, it is checking for new data and pushing the data into process insights here from the ERP system, and then, depending on which content you're looking at. For example, performance indicators are getting updated uh, data-wise once a day, and we have process flows that are getting updated uh, in the data uh, once a week. Um, but basically what I want to say here, there is a continuous live data flow now from the ERP to the tenant uh, onwards now. Right. Spot on, Lucas, and that's the that's the perfect segue to Daniel's question from the chat, which I would like to pick up. And the question is, um, What's the effect of the connection that we just established inside the ERP system um, on the overall ERP system performance? Um, as we know, we do have different jobs running. And um, Daniel just added that we do have the fear of it slowing down the source system every time um, it loads new data. So a few points to take on that. Um, first point is um, we don't have a permanent live stream, as Lucas just explained correctly. 
But what we do have is we do have two background jobs running in the, in the back, checking once a day if a certain metric is due for data collection and push over. So mean, it means there is no constant stress on the system. That's the one part, which obviously takes lots of load away. The second point is the data volume that we transfer and thereby also the runtime of the process is very limited. So um, we are not talking about, as this was also a question coming up earlier, um, about gigabytes of data, rather about megabytes of data, because the process performance that we look at is not that we extract a whole ERP system, but we look at certain time references, limiting the data that gets transferred. So overall, from the customer experience that we have, there wasn't a single case so far um, where we had to adjust the batch schedule or anything. That was um, adding to, to your point, Lucas, and also answering the question for Daniel. I hope that works. And the second thing is um, that Marta just dropped a question regarding the um, definition of the historical period that we want to upload. Now, on the one hand side, we do build period over time. As Lucas said, single PPIs are uploaded once a day, process flows once a week. So as we run a long time, we obviously build up a history. However, one scenario, and maybe you followed the, sec the session of Dirk Jandroska earlier um, as part of the session, which I would recommend. Um, he actually um, probably showed you that for each and every process flow or single PPI, we look at a certain time frame. For example, how many changes did we have in a purchase order over the last week? That so far is a fixed um, time frame that we pre-deliver based on all the ERP experience that we at SAP Signavio have seen. In the future, in one of the future releases, without putting a time against that, um, this time frame will also be adjustable for each and every customer. So, Marta, that's that's on your question. All right, um, I'm adding the link to the session that Till have just mentioned uh, to the chat. Uh, this session was uh, conducted by the colleague, uh, Dirk uh, Jandroska. And for those who need more details on that, please follow uh, the link and uh, get some deep dive uh, with Dirk on this. So I can't see more questions in the chat and we are almost on the top of the hour. With this, I would like to thank you, Lucas, for his presentation and the demo. And also thank you, Till, for picking up the questions from the chat or answering them directly. Uh, I also thank uh, all our, um, yeah, all participants of our session today. Stay tuned with us. Uh, I've put the already the link to the upcoming session in the chat. Please be with us with, for the next session that will take place on, uh, I think it will be on the 28th of April. Uh, there's one more question in the chat from yes. Daniel. Daniel, I'll, I'll, let me quickly pick that one because it's a, it's a very important question. We talk about an analytical tool. Most probably lots of you have an analytical infrastructure in-house already. And the point is that connecting it to a data warehouse does make sense. And what we are currently actually working on is we are providing DataSphere, formerly known as Data Warehouse Cloud, as well as SAC, Sub Analytics Cloud, analytical content for exactly that solution that Lucas just showed. So for Process Insights, and um, we're going to expose it as an API. So you are basically you have different ways, um, different ways to um, to consume that data. It does make sense. It's very valuable. You want to have executive managers as well as process experts looking at it's it's valuable, and we deliver on that. I hope that answers it. All right. Thank you very much. Again, uh, the upcoming session is scheduled for the for Thursday, 27th of April, and the topic will be new connection options for SAP Signavia Process Intelligence to SAP and non-SAP systems. So especially for those who 
have uh, connections to SAP and non-SAP systems are very welcome to join us on 27th of April. With this, again, thank you very much to our speakers and to all the audience also for being so active and bringing up questions. I wish you a great day and hope to welcome you in one of our upcoming sessions. With this, I'm going to end the session right now. <laughs>